Welcome to the Cass County Public Library's Moment of Science. We're going to do a little alchemy today for our summer reading program. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make some fairy foam. I have a um, 40 volume cream developer. This is primarily hydrogen peroxide. You can find it at your local hair care salon. Uh, it's getting really hard to find hydrogen peroxide right now, so I asked professionals what to make uh, fairy foam out of, and they knew exactly what to get me. Um, I've got a gallon of it here, and I've got two cups of regular quick rise yeast. I've got some Dawn dishwashing detergent, because we like foam, and food coloring galore, and some water. And you'll notice I have some uh, gloves here. That's because 40 volume hydrogen peroxide is very caustic stuff. Definitely don't want to do this at home without your parents, and you definitely don't want to do it without a pair of gloves and safety goggles. So, here we go. First thing we're going to do is consult the recipe. I need, I need almost six cups of water. Okay, we've got our measuring cup here. There's my six cups. Four cups, six cups. Perfect. All right. Now we've got... This is uh, about body temperature. Yeast likes body temperature. Six cups. A little bit less. Perfect. We'll see if we need more. Pour our yeast in. Give it a little stir. Wake up, yeast. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's messy. It smells like bread. Mmm. Yummy. Oh, yeah. That's floppy. Floppy. Stir that up a little better. Better. Science is messy. That's why I'm outside. All right. So we got our messy yeast. Excellent. Also, I have a, a lab coat on so I can wipe my hands. All right, so then we come over here. Oh, we got to put on our gloves. This is the dangerous part. I'm not coming anywhere near this stuff without gloves. All right, here we go. We'll see if I made my jar big enough. Also, I have a jar here. This jar is glass, and uh, I'll explain why. Because this reaction is going to get hot if we do this reaction. Ooh. I don't know if I have enough room for all of this. All right, we're going to hold some of this back so I have room for all of it. This reaction gets hot, as I was saying, and um, and I don't want to melt a plastic container. So, so then the next thing we need, if we're going to make it foamy, is Dawn dishwashing detergent or any kind of detergent. But the more the merrier. Let me get that in there. Oh, yeah. Science. And we're going to take our spoon, stir that up a little bit. See if we can get that nice and mixed in. Whoops, I'm slinging it everywhere. Don't sling it everywhere. This stuff is caustic. Oh, yeah, look, it's starting to try to eat a hole in my chair or in my, in my table. Foamy, foamy, foamy. Good stuff. All right. We'll dispose of that safely. Put the lid back on our 40 weight developer. Scurry, scurry stuff. All right, get this stuff out of the way. Well, yeah, what else we need here? I want to be very careful not to touch this lip here because it's got that developer all over it. This is the proper way to remove your, your glove. Not like this, like this. All right, so we've got some gel food coloring here. We've got some red. I like red. What do you guys like? Blue is my favorite color. The red's pretty awesome. Down the side like that. Make a push. Happy little red here. I wonder if we've got any Van Dyke brown. Probably not. And then, ooh, blue. Here, yeah, blue is my favorite color. And then. Green. You like green? Everybody like green? Green's awesome. Good, yeah. Let's 
smear that around. Oops, got some on the outside. That happens. Science is messy. And throw some yellow in here. Looks kind of orange, doesn't it? Oh, it's going to turn out yellow here, though. Okay. And I got some, some liquid food coloring, too. I don't know what it'll do. Let's see. Let's see if we can dribble it down the side. Science. It's going to be pretty. All right, so we're going to pick up our mess here and clear the air just a little bit. All right, and you can see my yeast has woken up. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little foamy in there. That's a sign it's awake. Good morning, yeast. If you would like to try this at home, use a smaller recipe. Uh, yeah. That's not blood, that's food coloring. Uh, you would want a half cup of hydrogen peroxide. You can find that in the, um, in the pharmacy. Uh, some dish soap, just a good solid squirt of it. A tablespoon of yeast, three tablespoons of warm water for that yeast. And you mix that 30 seconds and then assemble as I'm about to do. And here we go. Who's ready for some elephant toothpaste? I am. On your mark, get set, go. Well, my colors didn't turn out, but look at that toothpaste foam. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Where are my colors? Where are my colors? I can't find my colors. Oh, there's a little bit of green. Here we go. Here we go. All right. We got a little bit of color coming out. There's some green. But something you'll, you'll notice about this, this is really warm. This is warmer than me. This is warmer than this table. I know it's hot out here, but this stuff is hot. This probably, I'm going to guess, oh, probably 110, 120 degrees. It's just soap, by the way. Soap and oxygen and water. And uh, I'll send you back inside for an explanation of the science behind this. But uh, this gets warm because uh, it's an exothermic reaction. When you break those chemical bonds, what you get is heat and water and oxygen and a lovely bread smell. This has been your moment of science. Okay, so what we have here are two uh, models of hydrogen peroxide. What's going to happen is that we're going to break this up into different chemicals. This is one chemical. These are two, two molecules of it. Obviously, we're going to have a lot more mo molecules out there to be turning into things. But what's going to happen is we are going to add some things to this. What's going to happen is that, ooh, I'm shaking my table. We are going to add um, food coloring to make it pretty. And then we're going to add yeast to make it fun. This is yeast. This is what yeast, this is actually brewer's yeast. There's not a whole lot of difference between brewer's yeast and baking yeast. They're really close cousins. Uh, brewer's yeast tends to make more alcohol versus carbon dioxide. And um, baker's yeast tends to make more carbon dioxide versus alcohol. So that's, that's the big difference. But they pretty much look the same under the microscope. So that's what they're going to look like. So what happens is we take this lovely acid here. This is dangerous stuff. This is hair developer. This is what we use to color our hair. So we're going to have to use gloves for this part. And then we're going to introduce a bunch of yeast. The yeast 
have this nifty little enzyme called catalase. I'll show you what it looks like. You got some Rorschach going on there. I think it looks a little like a brain. Maybe if we turn it upside down. Yeah, it looks a little like a brain. Anyway, this is catalase. Catalase is a protein that is a catalyst. It's right there in the name, catalyst, catalase. And what it does is um, it breaks things that have oxygen in them down into water and oxygen. Um, this is a, this is an enzyme we have, uh, most living creatures have in their body. It is absolutely necessary for us to continue existing because if you don't have it, what happens is all the oxygen in the atmosphere starts to bind to all the parts of your body and break it into pieces. You can see this happening on a piece of um, iron outside. It turns red if uh, it gets exposed to the elements. That's oxidization. That's called rust on a piece of metal. In us, it's oxidization, and it's just as bad for us as it is for metal. So we have this nifty little chemical called, uh, what did I call it? Catalase. Catalase. Um, and like I said, it's found in just about every living organism, especially yeast. Um, and what it does is it catalyzes the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. You'll notice that um, water is H2O, two, uh, two hydrogen, one oxygen. Well, that's the same stuff that you find here in hydrogen peroxide. It's just in different quantities. So what, um, what catalase does is it comes in... <laughs> And it breaks apart these bonds here. It just breaks them apart, takes these bonds out, and it turns them into, oh, we're going to go the wrong way here. It turns them into water. We've got one water here. And let's see here, we're going to break this one apart and put a water over here. Yeah, see? So you've got, oh wait, <laughs> I messed that up. And you got a water over here. Well, see what we have left over. We have two oxygens. Boy, howdy, I am bad at this. There we go. There's two molecules of water. But we have these two oxygens floating around and what are they gonna do? They are lonely and they want to be with each other. So they make air. This is what we breathe. This is what we drink. Very simple. So now you've taken this nasty chemical that can burn you and color your hair into nifty, awesome colors, and you've turned it into something really safe, water and oxygen. Cool trick, huh? Now another thing it does that I didn't point out, I'm about to, is it also makes heat when this, when this reaction happens. You get heat. The foam that's going to well up from this elephant toothpaste from our fairy foam is hot. It is warm. It's, I don't know, easily 105, 110 degrees. It is warm because when you break a covalent bond, what happens is you release energy. And in this case, that turns into heat. And this is one of the things that keeps your body warm. This is how we stay warm. We break up all of these, these, we use these enzymes to break up chemicals and turn them into things our body can use because we don't use hydrogen peroxide in our body too much. Um, but uh, we do use water and we do use oxygen. We use a lot of both of those things. And so the catalase enzyme rushes in there, breaks that up and turns them into things we can use. And that's, and, and also it turns it into heat, which helps keep you warm in the winter and makes you sweat in the summer which is why I'm inside right now. So there you go. There's a quick and dirty breakdown of what's going to happen out there today. Found the color. Here it is. I had to dump out my bucket. Turns out science needs a bigger bucket. safety tip. This is what happens if you don't get all of the hydrogen peroxide reacted and leave it on your grass for a little too long. It bleaches it out and kills it. So uh, heads up, the stuff I'm working with is caustic. Keep your gloves on and uh, be safe out there, kids. Okay. 
So here we are again for another moment of science. I learned a little bit about making video. It turns out I need to be a little bit closer to my microphone for you guys to hear me. Um, I had a little bit of the uh, developer, the hydrogen peroxide leftover, and I've set up uh, another experiment. I was a little disappointed with my elephant toothpaste yesterday, so we're going to try again today and see if we can't make it a little bit more exciting. Um, I've already got everything set up. I've got the developer in, or the uh, hydrogen peroxide in the bottle. I've got the um, uh, food coloring in there. I've got the soap in there, and I've got my yeast ready to go, and I've got a funnel ready to set that up, and if you give me just a second, we'll make it happen. Mm. Moment of science, take two. Oh yeah, my yeast is really awake. Are you ready? Oh yeah, again, not blood. This is cleanup from yesterday. <laughs> All right, here we go. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. That is much, much better. <laughs> We've got colors, we've got foam. And again, the same things happened that happened yesterday. The, um, the soap is what captures all the oxygen that's getting out, so that's what makes the bubbles. And then uh, you've got your food coloring in there, making it look cool. And um, you've got your catalase in there, ripping hyd hydrogen peroxide apart and making water and oxygen and causing this these cool bubbles. Here's some up close shots of it. Oh yeah, there's the purple and the green and the red. Oh yeah, that's some good looking fairy foam. Look, it's still going. Well, thank you for joining me for Cass County Public Library's Moment of Science. And uh, don't forget to sign up for summer reading. You can do that at cascolibrary.org slash SRP. It's free and fun for the whole family.